We're back for another exciting episode of The Spicy Life. I am your relationship expert and magnetic matchmaker, Spicy Mari. And on today's episode, we're going to be talking about the reality versus the expectations of marriage. To join me in the G-spot, that is guest spotlight, I have the beautiful, the lovely Angela Johnson Reyes. And she is joining me with her husband, Manuel Reyes. So excited to have these phenomenal people. You don't know how much I have been harassing them to get them on this show. So this is like a crazy, insane blessing. And they're the most coolest, humble people ever. But you guys are familiar with Angela. I'm going to give you a little rundown of all the things that she's uh, famously known for. She is an actress, an author, a comedian. I know you've seen all of her work. And her husband, who is just as gifted and talented, is also a real estate investor, musician, podcaster, and coach. Thank you guys so much for being on the show and being with me. Thank you. When I tell you, like, running behind, mic problems, and they're just like, okay, you know what? We're still going to make the best of this situation. Yes, it could be a little ghetto in this world, but (laughs) they are rolling with the punches. So I really appreciate that, you guys. Like, thank you so much for being just not an awesome couple who finally said yes to me. Hmm. I've been harassing (laughs) you guys for two years now. I apologize. (laughs) Not our intention. No, 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 no. But I know what it's like. You guys are, you know, extremely busy. You have to, you know, maintain an amazing marriage, but also your careers. So, uh with all my harassing, you guys finally said yes. And that is the power of manifestation, okay? Yes. I put something in the ether and I finally got it to happen. So thank you guys for blessing me with this opportunity. She persisted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have been um, following your guys' relationship and your career for a very long time. You guys both are successful in your own right. Um, before we get started on realities versus expectations, I want you guys to start off with my very spicy question that I initially ask every person who comes into the seat, okay? This is my spice breaker. You both have to share when you first fell in love with yourself. When was that defining moment? I want to hear the story of the aha, I'm freaking dope, I love myself. Hmm. Do you have an answer? This is tough because it's not like... um. I've always weirdly had this confidence about myself. Like, I don't remember myself as somebody who was ever, who didn't think he was dope. Mm. And um, it's not like, like when I was younger, obviously I couldn't put words to that, but I always had this insane amount of confidence and it didn't matter what anybody thought. Mm. It just, it wouldn't shut off. <laughs> it just wouldn't shut off. Like, like it's like, always been amazing. As, it's not even, I, I, didn't, I didn't know if I could say out, now I think I'm amazing. Back then, I just loved the person that I was. So I, I just never really shrunk back who I was. So well, I can't remember a, a defining moment. Have you ever um, fallen out of your love with yourself and you had to fall back in? Um, yes, but probably not for the reasons you thought. Uh, I, had, I, I fell out, you know, in about my senior year of high school, I ended up getting saved and doing the church thing and love Jesus and all that stuff. But... I think the judgment from mm. believers made mm-hmm. me think something about myself that wasn't true. Mm. Not what God saw me as, but it was just more what these people saw me as. Yeah. So for a split second, I doubted myself. Mm. For a split second. For, for and then a I minute. Like, minute. Yeah. Then I was like, nah, bruh, this is how I was made. So it's, I've, and I just, it's like, for me, it's, I don't know. I, I don't like attribute it to myself as something like, oh, look what I did. It's just this weird thing where I've, always had a confidence and I never really doubted myself. I love that. That's amazing. I wish more of us had that. Yeah. Angela, did you ever have a moment where you realized like, dang, I'm the bomb.com. You fell out of love, had to fall back in or that defining moment where you had to reestablish self again. Um, maybe there's been different seasons of my life. Um, growing up, maybe when I was good at sports, I was like, yeah, I'm dope. And I would race all the boys at school and, you know, growing up and evolving as a woman. And I think I've had different stages of re reintroducing myself to myself, like this new version mm-hmm. of myself. So I feel like I have many opportunities to um, fall in love with myself as I evolve as a person. Who are you right now? Like if you had to say who this Angela 2.0 of 2022 is, who would that be? Um, she's a deconstructed version of her 20 year old self. 
<laughs> I love that. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to make you a uh, break down some of the um, storytelling in a second. But the episode for today is really getting into your guys' like relationship and helping couples understand or even singles expectations versus reality. The um, image that I get to see of you guys um, is, you know, this fun, loving, happy, extremely supportive couple. I see you support his podcast. I see him, you know, supporting your stands up. It looks as if you guys are, you know, it's all what? fake. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, but you're giving us this like image of this, this power couple that also is extremely like loving and supportive. And most people will call it relationship goals. So I wanted you guys to kind of share what is the reality versus maybe what you thought marriage was going to be versus what it actually is. Because I think that's very helpful because people have delusions of grandeur until they actually get in it. So could you start with just some of the things that you thought that it was going to be to be a wife or getting a husband, what you thought that that was going to be versus the reality? I mean, I think I probably thought marriage was all bliss and like, mm. yay, you have your person, your partner and go live happily ever after. But it's a, a lot of work and – um I would hear people say that, oh, marriage is work, marriage mm -hmm. is work, but you don't really know until you're in it, I guess. Um, but I was saying that um, an expectation I had of marriage was um, what I would see in my friends and family and on TV and movies is you have like a nine to five marriage. You have where the you guys wake up, you make breakfast, you go to work, he goes to work or the mom takes care of the kids or whatever it is. And then, um, you know, you go to birthday parties on the weekends, you go grocery shopping mm -hmm. and like all these things. And so I had this expectation that that's what marriage looks like. And when we first got married, we were both touring. He was a touring musician. I was a touring comedian. And we were rarely in the same city together. And mm. when we were, it wasn't doing normal things like going to the grocery store or anything like that. And so I think I, I had a hard time with it in the beginning. And I would pray a lot. And I'd be like, God, when do we get normal married time? Like, mm. when do we just get to be regular married people? And... It wasn't until I felt like God was telling me, this is your normal. Like, you're, this is your normal married time. You're traveling. He's traveling. You guys are here in this city together. You're in that city together. You may not always be at home together. And I think once I came to the, to the realization of that, that my marriage is going to look different than yeah. what I saw growing up, then it was like, oh, I, I can radically accept that and that that's what my marriage is and then embrace it and move forward with that as mm. opposed to like resisting like, wait, no, I want the marriage that I saw growing up. And it's like, oh, but we're not even those people. We don't even have real Why like, Why did jobs. you want that though? When you saw it, what that's about just, it? That's were you, you like, saw. that's what I want. Not that's what I want. That's what it is. Mm. Uh, you know what I yeah. mean? It's like, this is what marriage looks like. Turn on every TV show and every movie. That's true. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, Oh, I think that's what I was just in the back of my mind. I thought that's what marriage meant and yeah. looked like, you know? What about you, Manuel? Is there any expectations versus the reality? What were some of the expectations that you had of a wife or when I become a husband, this is what's going to happen? Oh, it was silly stuff. Like, <laughs> like uh, again, like in the church or, or maybe in traditional areas, like people would think, uh, I remember one thing that I realized, oh, when when I get married, then I'm not going to notice any other female in the mm. world. I'm just going to, and you know, uh, how do I say it? Like in a human way, like I literally was not even thought, I will not notice another pretty the person. the desire would shut down. Yeah. Right, and it would right. just be like, I'm just a cyborg and there's only one person. <laughs> And then, I, like, after I got married, I, we were still touring, like I said. And, you know, I was used to combing the room and, like, is my wife here? Because I'm on stage and I get the view of everybody that's in the audience. And I would still do that because our marriage was quick. Like, we we met and got married within nine months. Oh, so, wow. You just knew she was the one. Yeah, yeah. I was 30 when we got married and I dated enough wrong ones to know the right ones. Mm. So when I... When we were still out there, though, both of us had a, the first year was a funny transition because we were, we were still living single, you know, because we didn't have a long courtship. We didn't like get to settle in. And half of that courtship, we were still touring. How did you guys even date though? So that's uh, interesting. If you both yeah. are touring and decide to get married, when did you court her? It, there wasn't really a, a courtship. 
I moved to LA in January. We were married in June. But I'm flying out the tour. She's flying out the tour. So we met uh, via mutual friends in August, and we dated via Skype. <laughs> so wow. it was all he was in his green room. I was in my green room, and that's how we got to know each other. And then we became officially boyfriend and girlfriend in October. Then we were engaged by Christmas Eve, and then we got married in June. So it moved very quickly for us, and it was mostly online until he moved to L.A. in January. So it's not until January to G June when we got married that we were actually in the same city. So you guys are like the original like dating app before like dating apps yeah. existed. It was wild, <laughs> but it was, it was great because we didn't really waste time with – you know, I always tell people like the second uh, a relationship gets physical mm – -hmm. Uh, that's the second you get you've heard of beer goggles i feel like there's like you know sex goggles yeah physical goggles like yeah. once you cross a certain line all of a sudden all the red flags look yep. freaking pink yep. and rosy yep mm -hmm. we didn't have that we had pure communication what are your expectations you know for me the most important thing was finding a woman who loved god was out of debt and um <laughs> That was the two top things. Like I, God I and could, out of debt. Yeah, God, because I can tell who you are by your debt. Like wow. So easy. what does your debt say? Well, depending on what kind of debt it is. Mm. You know, I dated a girl who she had thirty thousand dollars of debt in in makeup and clothes. So I immediately broke up with her. Wow. Immediately. Then there's somebody who has debt because they went to law school. That's different. Mm. I understand why you took on that debt. But if you don't understand that two plus two equals four, yeah. then I know when I'm gone away, you're going to be making dumb decisions. So it spoke more to maturity because it's math is basic. There's no emotion. Mm -hmm. You understand I make this much a week. Yeah. I'm allowed to spend this much. So if you can't understand that, I don't expect you to understand the complexity of a relationship. Dang. It's interesting that you say that. Uh, one thing that I tell my women or try to like encourage them with is that men are not so much concerned about like what is that dollar sign that you are bringing into the household but more importantly how do you spend how do you, when you do have the dollars or you do you know we we do join our accounts men care they actually are looking at how does she spend because how she spends her money is how she's going to spend our money so it's yeah. interesting that you say that because that's very true this is like a testimony you're over here breaking up with women <laughs> straight for up. inappropriate spending yeah because it doesn't <laughs> like i'm like i don't understand how this doesn't like you're gen you're going to enter into a marriage like this is hard, but math addition and subtraction <laughs> is easy. You're like that should be the easy like you should know if you bring home four fifty a week, you can't spend five. Mm -hmm. But a wide amount of people don't get that. They live on credit. They live on hope and dreams. And look, there is good debt. If you're leveraging your house to buy another house, it's a gamble, but at least I know where you're going. I can make sense of that debt. Yeah. You know, because you're trying to gain equity. You're trying to make moves. In five years, we're both going to be happy. But it's like immature debt. And to me, I'm like, man, if you don't got your if you don't got your finances right, like there's I have little hope that we're going to be OK because it's just going to transition into the rest of your relationship. So it sounds like you also have the expectation that whoever you date or you would marry would be a financially sound mind mm -hmm. was that the reality did you yeah. marry angela and you're like you're the best spender ever i love the way I didn't you really budget know. look when i met her <laughs> everybody knew her before i did so ah. i was at the at the point when i met her i was signed i had a i was i was creating a girl group uh getting them signed to my label and my girl group was always quoting her and i was thinking the girl group was just really funny i was like man y'all are funny y'all got this way of talking and they were just quoting her. They were talking like wow. her. Wow. I didn't know that because, you know, like I, when we met, you know, my best friend's wife introduced us. And then I watched her her comedy special because she's like, she's a comedian, you know, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, bro, you got to send me the special. Because if she ain't <laughs> funny, I can't be with her. Because I'm a cheerleader. Yeah. Like if you know me, if I'm with you, I'm riding for you. Whatever vocation you have, I'm going to learn about it. I'm going to educate myself so that that way, like I can help in some way, shape or form. So I knew that if she was a comedian, she had to be at least make me laugh. Yeah. So that that way I can be fully in just like with my music. If she thought my music was whack, it ain't going to work. Yeah. Every time I come home excited to show her music, she's going to be like, oh, please don't show this to my friends, you know? So when I, when I established that, it was like, oh, cool. 
Then I finally, you know, I land in LA. We go on our first date. She picks me up in a Lexus. And I was like, hmm, that's nicer than my car. Mm. Okay. Then we go to her little condo that she owns. And I'm like, huh, this is nicer (laughs) than my house. (laughs) So I was like, I'm not going to ask, but she doing something right. Right. She doing something right. And I I respect that and I appreciate that because I always told myself I wanted to be a fan of whoever I married. So important. I wanted to be a genuine fan that I can like just so sure be like, I am I am so lucky to be with this person. And so that's what I well, you that's became, what I became a fan though. After you after you watched fan. the special, were you like sold? Sign yeah, I was up. like, she's hilarious, she got a cute <laughs> little butt, she's you know. I had I, no butt. I <laughs> was, I was, I was, that was a charity case. He just took me on. I was being, yeah, I was being positive. I thought she was funny. But you're undeniably attractive. So it's not like oh, one of those situations where he had to try to find the good in you. He could, yeah, literally, he could literally see it. <laughs> yeah, it was it was dope. I, I loved it. And I became an instant, instant fan. And I've been fanning ever since. Oh, dang. We love to so. hear men talk about their wives like this, right? Like, it, yeah. it gets us choked up. I love how he does celebrate you. Even right now, he's still, like, gassing you up. And yeah. that means, you know, that he's proud of you. Yeah. So I'm going to run a few things by you guys. And I want you guys to kind of tell me um, if this was maybe an expectation and what the reality of it is, okay? So the first one is um, your spouse is responsible for your happiness. A lot of people go into a relationship thinking that their spouse is responsible for their happiness. Mm -hmm. Fact or fiction? Fiction. Fiction. Okay. Elaborate. We learned that a long time ago. Like you, if you can't learn to be happy and the Bible talks about learning to be content with and without. Um, If you can't learn to be happy with your current situation, you're never going to be happy about your future situation. You know, because if you're able to understand, even if you're in a place where it's not the greatest, you don't have everything you want. If you can find happiness there, Mm -hmm. everything else is just rainbows. Extra icing on the cake. It's like, bruh, if you can be happy alone, broke, with nothing, then damn, when you're not broke, when you have someone, you're going to be, you're just going to be ecstatic. But if external things take away or add to your happiness, Mm -hmm. then you're not really happy. And your spouse is considered an external thing. For sure. So yep. you you are the creator of your own happiness and your spouse gets to partake in that with you, but they don't create it for you. So how did you guys pour into your happiness cup outside of him? What are things that you are doing so that you're not dependent on him for that that dose, that hit? Um. Well, luckily for me, I've always been very independent. And like when we first got together, like I said, we were both touring. So I was already living my own life, yeah. doing me. And so mine was more of a transition on how how do I um, share mm. with him and um, find happiness with him and just combine my life with his life because I've been single for so long. I'm CEO of me. I'm doing my thing. I'm touring. I'm boss lady. I'm in charge of my own business, yep. my own finances, all the things. So I think for me, it, it was more of like, how, how do I blend in? Yeah. How do I him? merge this? Yeah. yeah how I do I merge? You said, some, you said something super important. Like I always tell people, man, it's good to find people that are running at your speed. If you're, if you're a young lady and you're you know what you want and yep. you're after it, the most frustrating thing to do is get with somebody who don't know what they yep. want. No yep. matter how good looking they are, no matter how whatever, because even if they have a little bit of money, it's like there's something to said about walking in your purpose or feeling that you're somewhere sure. in your purpose because that's what makes somebody really come alive. Yep. So with us, we were already in our purpose. So really, I I was stoked. I was happy. I can. I can be cool by myself for a good amount of time because when you're touring, you're usually by yourself. And so for us, like she said, it was just, it was just blending or handing the baton to one another. And now we're running together, you know? Question. Um, and I love that you were saying this cause you, you were actually referencing what your purpose mate is. That's that person who, when you, when you have your purpose, they help fuel it. They help you mm-hmm. build your empire, God's mission for your life. Like they help you fulfill that. But Angela kind of just said earlier, she was like, I already had mine. I was a boss chick. Yeah. Some men would look at her on the comedy special and be intimidated to Mm -hmm. be with someone like her who's as, you know, has as many accolades. 
I know you mentioned earlier, you've always loved yourself and were confident. Was there ever a point that you were like, dang, I don't know if I could hang with someone like that. How did you handle it? Because a lot of men yeah. may want to know those secret tips on this how to handle a successful woman. This is where I told you I was a little less traditional. Because okay. I know in the traditional structure, you know, men are believed to be the providers. They're the ones that um, have to take care of everything. To me, being a provider, what that meant was providing peace for my home. Mm. Being someone that was full of wisdom. Uh, when I, when I finally got into our finances, I recognized, holy crap, this chick is way in front of me, mm. like way, which made me love her even more. Cause that meant she was doing what she said she was going to do. Yeah. She's crushing. Yeah. And so now I'm even more of a believer, but I just had this conversation with her cause I was in my purpose. I was doing Christian music at that point, And my genre of Christian music was not the money-making genre of Christian music. <laughs> so, but I was so happy because I felt like I was in my purpose, which my purpose for me has never been about money. It was like, how many people can I reach? How many yep. people can I love on, touch? That was just all I cared about. So I remember talking to her. I was like, hey, I made $35,000 last year. I may never make more. Wow. If you care about that, we don't have to get married. Wow. Because I've learned how to live at 35 grand and I'm happy. Yep. If it's something that bothers you, I'm never going to be the guy that chases money. Yep. I'm always going to chase purpose because I know that's where true happiness comes from. And her response was, I don't need your money. I got money. Yep. I don't need. I just need you to be you. And so once she said that, it was off to the races because I'm awesome with money. I'm super awesome. You're like, so I'm going to manage your money great. <laughs> it's, what's, it's what we've done. So she, she makes... Again, it's not like I'm a chump. Like I, I still do, you know, I do six figures, but it's not even close. But you weren't always at that. No. Yeah. And so the beauty of it is like, okay, God, I don't have all the money, but I know how to make, I know how to multiply this. And that's exactly what I did. I took the money, multiplied it, tripled the net worth, and we're still building, still just gaining. So I always laugh because I'm like, maybe if I was the guy, like maybe my ego would have just been... Through the control. roof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It God had to humble you somehow. Too whatever. Because <laughs> for whatever reason, to this day, I the roles still haven't switched. But technically, I work twice as hard. I do more things. Yeah. But it just doesn't happen. This is going to be a crazy question, Angelo. But tell women how they can be more comfortable with a man who makes less. Because I feel like we are living in a culture that is like, you know, and we were kind of talking about this off camera, like, you know, boss babe, boss bitch, boss chick. And it's very, you know, financially driven. He has to make what I make or more. And we're perpetuating this narrative of, you know, us women becoming extremely successful at a exponential rate that history has never seen. And we also want partnership. But a lot of the times we think that he has to be equal to us or more. How did you wrap your head around not needing his money and being okay with him just being in his purpose and happy? Um, I think I knew that. Manuel provided something other than finances mm. for me. He provided stability, emotional support, uh, spiritual support, um, physical support. He was my in encourager. Um, he helped me um, communicate my feelings. I was not really great at communicating. Um, so I knew he provided for me in a different way. Mm. So for me, luckily, I didn't need him to provide yeah. financially for me. So I was able to notice all the other ways that he did provide. Mm. I think it might be difficult if there's women out there who are struggling to pay their own bills yeah. to be okay with a guy that also is struggling to pay his <laughs> right. own bills, yeah. you know? Um, but I would say to look for the ways that this man does provide for you. What are these other ways? That's a nugget a right big, there. A big thing would be, I wasn't lazy. It's Oh yeah. It's different. That's huge too. When the guy's grinding, mm -hmm. like doing more shows than her, but not making <laughs> as much, it's not of lack of effort. Right, right. And you believe in yourself. You're like, I'm so I'm confident. Like, I'm just like, like, we always laugh at each other. I'm like, babe, I think I should totally be making more money than I make right now. <laughs> like, I'm out there getting it. But I laugh at myself because I'm like, it's all good. No worries. I'm going to be fine. But there was a there was a mutual respect that I'm not just going to chill. Yeah. I don't, with her and, and me, and this will probably rub a lot of dudes the wrong way too. Like, when it came to finances, 
I would literally, if I bought something, if I was going to buy something, mm -hmm. I would ask Ange first. And if she said no, didn't matter what it was, I'd take it back. But it wasn't like, hey, can I buy this? It yeah, wasn't no, no, like no. that. It was, was it? like, hey, look at this cool jacket I was looking at. It cost this much. It's made out of this, blah, blah, blah. The designers, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> what do you think? It was always like uh, that. So it wasn't uh, like, mom, can I have some money? He pitched it. He pitched it. Yeah, I don't mean it like that. It was more so like, <laughs> if we're going to be together, then um, right now we're riding a good high. But if if ish ever gets bad and, and we hit a hard time, I want to make sure that every decision I made was co-signed. Yeah. Because if not, the first thing she's going to say and yep. say, all that shit you bought. Yep, yep. Now we got to sell it all. We How much, add all this up. That's how much we're in the hole. So I wanted to make sure that every decision I made from buying houses to buying cars to buying socks. Well, that's partnership, right? You're like running the play by her. You're not just running the play. You're like, hey, look, this is how we're going to win. This is how we're going to win the game. And so I'm studying. That's healthy. I'm giving her the background. Like mm. if it's house, if it's real estate, if it's cars, like, you know, I own a lot of cars right now. Yeah. But they're all going up in value. So I tell her, hey, look, this is the type of car I have. Look at where it was at five years ago. Look at where it's at now. It's only going up. So these are investments for me. This is why I can rationalize, hey, I'm going to spend this much on a car. Because in five years, if we have to sell it, I'm going to make money. True. I mean, but I think what you guys said are like two spicy tips right there that are nuggets that I want to reiterate for everyone. You said that like you didn't need his money but you saw the value in how he was a provider elsewhere outside of dollar signs he said that he was also extremely confident and hardworking, and i think that is extremely important because you know that he has maybe the potential for more or not and i think a lot of people look at the work ethic right but then they're like, okay, I'll get with you, but you can't stay at 35K. I'll get with you, but you have to get to, you know, 500K. Yeah. And yeah. sometimes that's unrealistic. If you fall in love with the school teacher, the chances of them getting to that point, and we get wrapped up in this idea of the potential, the potential, and won't accept the reality of our partner and where they're really at, therefore not giving them permission to just do what they love. And mind you, this wasn't, the like what you said earlier is is so true. This is a new this is a new boss bitch mm -hmm. social media wave. Uh, I'm going to show you how to bag a six figure. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, <laughs> this is a thing that has never been before. Before, men who did normal jobs like plumbing, like uh, like just basic jobs, 50000 60000 yeah, a yeah. year, those were like respected. Yep. And now they're not. And the, and the sad reality of it is, is that women are making uh, gambles with their future and with their life and with their love without knowing like actual numbers and statistics of like, okay, you want a six figure dude. That's like less than 5% yep. of America. Yep. And all of them have choices because there's less of them and there's more of y'all. So once you hit a certain age, if you have a kid, it, it's multiple things. If you have a high body count, all these things count against you. And I'm not saying that because that's what I believe. I'm just saying like, that's what the numbers right. say. Yeah. That if they have their pick, men will go towards youth. Men will go towards beauty. Men will go towards fertility. I have my choice, mm -hmm. so I'm not going to pick the 35-year-old single parent. I'm going to get the 25-year-old that has less stuff to deal with, you know? And I don't, like, I don't really think that way, but men at high status that everybody wants, they have their choice, so they, they cherry pick. If you're saying that that's the reality, then how do you encourage or women in their 30s to not give up on love because if you're saying that well you guys don't you guys are successful and there's not a chance for you because if men have their pick they're going to go younger then how do you go back in and motivate women to continue dating are you telling them date men who aren't as successful what's the advice for that um don't discount men who yes. aren't mm. the social media um yeah yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. goals guy or but whatever even more so redefine success because i don't Look, I've had no money and I have money. And I'm sorry. Like it doesn't make you happier. Mm -hmm. It does it does allow you to do better things. <laughs> Makes life you, a little bit. Yeah, easier. if you are already I'm happy. Poor too. <laughs> if you are already happy, you can, you know, live life on 10. Yeah. But the important thing is you brought up the example. You get it with a teacher. Mm -hmm. What if they freaking just 
love, right. educate, and they thrive. And if you ever go to their classroom, you'd be like, what? This dude is a rock star, but he's a teacher and he makes $55,000 a year. Yeah. If you start discrediting people and look, subconsciously it happens to most women mm -hmm. because this is the society we live in. Even the most person that thinks, oh, I'm not about money, guaranteed every time I ask him, does he have to make the same amount as you or more? Always. Well, yeah, yeah, of course. Always. They always say, yeah. But, and I'm I like, well, you're, you're discounting a lot of people yeah. that could probably be amazing. And you don't know. And I take it personal because again, I started off at 35 grand a year. Now I do way more than that. And if she would have had that same mentality yep. towards me, you know, I wouldn't have put our money to work to where it's like, oh, we're going to be good. Yeah. We're going to be really good. So I think they just need to readjust what they see as successful. I think happiness and uh, work ethic, yeah. these things are character goals that don't change with money. Those are like staple points that this guy, whether he makes a lot or makes a little, I can respect this in him. And then readjust your position in this society. If you want to play by the rules, if you want to be a woman that's like, well, I need a six-figure guy, mm -hmm. then you are entering into the rules, which means now everything you do is a part of the game. Yep. So if you think that you're going to push this idea of like, oh, well, I'm a boss, but I'm going to go out and act like a man and get what I want. I'll sleep with this dude if I want to. I'll sleep with mm -hmm. this with this. Bruh, a high-value dude is going to look at that and be like, wait, you want me? to now shack up with somebody that's been with all these guys. Like, so all these people can come up to me and say, hey, I, I got with your wife. Well, then that doesn't, how is, the rest of my stuff is high value. I buy freaking $400 slippers. I have a Rolls Royce that's one of a hundred. I'm all about limited things that are like very special. So why would I then go that route i'm curious because you keep bringing a body that was, count that was a per, <laughs> that was a that he don't really have a rolls royce and like that was a, a right, imaginary right. person <laughs> okay. and, and i don't care do about body say, count do you I share i was gonna it. say do you share the same sentiments as him do you think that most people care about body count um i don't know with guys like i couldn't tell you what guys think about that um Honestly, I don't know. I don't have a good answer. I personally, <laughs> I personally do. I never have. It's never affected me because I have a past and I'm like, I'm not going to judge somebody of, of their past. But as I study relationships, you as see. I study the psychology, this is what the information says. Yep. And I'm like, damn. And that's one thing that I think is hard for people is when we do show them the data, like, okay, like this is not just opinion and cultural. This is actually like what scientifically has been proven based on Pew Research, based on the information that's out there. Yeah. And it's, it's striking to them, right? Like I, I definitely think that there's some things that are very controversial that we're saying, but at the same time, it doesn't take away from some of the reality of it. Yeah. And I mean, I think it's, look, it was, it was weird for me. Like when I read it, I'm like, nah, bruh, no, because I don't think that way. I think women at 55 are beautiful. I think women at 25, are, I think if you're just beautiful and awesome, I don't care if you got a kid. I don't care if you got, I just think you're awesome just based on you. But I've also never been a uh, super, super high value according to what um, our society says Yeah, you wouldn't be considered the high value man based on what I've you were always, making. Yeah, I've always been like, I just want to look at character. I if love good, your definition or how you said, let's redefine success. The first question, my one of the first questions my husband asked me on one of our first dates was how I define success. Because he wanted to hear, is it about external factors? Is it dollar signs behind it? Is it, 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 it extrinsically motivated or is it intrinsically motivated for you to get that success? Mm. Because if it's cars, house, money, if you don't have what this ideal is, that means you'll never be happy or see yourself Correct. as successful. So yeah. he was kind of asking me in a way to try to see, are we compatible? Because that's not how he defines success. And so I love that. And since then have even recommended like my clients to ask, you know, ask yourself how to define that and then ask the person you're going out with how they defined it and see if it's in alignment with how you defined it. Because yeah. if it is based on how many square feet your house is, so then you're never going to see yourself as successful. Right. If you it's, don't hit that, like it's very scary to to think in those terms because you don't know what the future holds or you can get it all and lose it. Yep. You know, and then are you going to be unhappy when you're still next to the person that you are like, I love you no matter what, rich or poor. And it's like sometimes I do experiments just to see if I'm attached to things like mm. during the pandemic. We sold our house. Wow. In the hills. I sold two of my cars. 
because I was like, I really love cars. But I was like a damn valet at my house. At this point, <laughs> I had like seven and I'm just moving some to get to others. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. Do I have a problem? Why did with you cars? need that many cars? Because I, I love cars. I'm a car guy. But I started recognizing, okay, again, self-awareness, right? That's the essence spicy. Correct. Oh, so good. Okay, man. Well, I started I realizing okay. like. Do I have these things because I'm overcompensating? Because I mm. recognize that I did that when I finished music. I used to have all these clothes, mm. Louboutin, Gucci, Versace, all this stuff because I'm on stage and I want to present myself in a certain way. Then when I retired from it, bruh, I'm like decked out going to a movie by myself. And I'm like, why are you wearing so much money? Like, you're not even on <laughs> stage anymore. So I had to ask myself, and I recognize, oh, you're, you want people to see you as you're still, you're still doing, doing it. it. Yeah, this was ego. So you're dressing like the guy who's still doing it, and that's when I sold my whole like half of my closet and put it into a remodel I was doing. So it's the same thing with cars. Do these cars make you feel like you're better than somebody else? But all these Selling. purchases, we ran all those by Angela. Yeah. Every single, every single more, car, and, and every we can single more than afford item, them. clothing, everything, all of it. And each one, she said, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but it's also because I resell. I mean, there's definitely times where he would come home with stuff. This is a long time ago. He used to like shop, shop. He would come home with stuff and I'd be like, how much is that? How much is that? Because he buys luxury designer things where I was thought forever 21. Yeah. So I was still you like, why, girl, I would get a whole <laughs> full outfit, like top pants, shoes, <laughs> everything <laughs> like a hundred hold on 150 bucks i got my whole fit done. and i even went to sephora and i got like you know a little lipstick or whatever <gasps> everything done 150 bucks right. let's go and then this guy his he would come home with like thousands of dollars wow of a t-shirt and i'm like wait huh Explain yeah one time me. i added up my shoes and i was like oh i could buy a house with this so it was like, it was, but I have a resale business. So I, I buy nice stuff because I know I can always resell it. So a thousand dollar pair of Louboutins, I'm really only paying 400 because when I'm done wearing them for a year or two, I sell them for six. So Question. It's like, so, because uh, now you're going to make people, in, and I'm going to ask this for you guys because I know what you guys are thinking. This sounds like a caviar taste though, but not caviar budget. But mm -hmm. was it because you looked at your wife's finances as yours as well? Because when you merge partnership, it all becomes yours. Is it because you guys saw it as this is all of ours, right? Because you're not buying all that designer stuff off of 35K. No. So was it- At this point, I'm making more of them. My wife's is mine and, right. and, and- But yeah, it was definitely ours. Okay. Our, and that's how we, yeah. I mean, that's how we run well, our house as well. Even more so, we set a number, right? We have so a budget. we're very frugal. Like- Frugal in the best way. We're not cheap, but we set a number with our business managers that it's like, okay, we're saving this. We're putting this into investments. Da, 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 da. You guys live off of 10%. Do whatever you want with that 10%. And when I would buy bigger things, I would tell her, yo, I made this. I got this check. I'm going to take 10% and go do it. So we're like over safe. Yeah. You know, but I do it with the knowledge of like, this is not really what it costs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a 5000 St. Laurent jacket, but I'm going to sell it for 3500 when I'm done. So it's really just a $1,500 jacket, which is what anybody Well, that also on. gets her to buy into your decision making as well. Because she mm -hmm. knows because you know how to manage money. She knows like there's going to be some type of return on investment. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's making your partner happy. Like, and there's never been a time where the business manager calls and says, what are you doing? Yeah. Because right. I'm on the phone with them three times a week making sure that money's good. Yeah. So it was everything... Everything that I do, my caviar taste, <laughs> I study. I don't do anything without studying. You do your research first. Because I want to know why I'm going to spend that much. Why am I going to spend $2,300 on a Louis backpack? Well, I love that every now and then you're doing a self check-in, right? And Not you're assessing. Too. like So that's that's extremely healthy. I have more for you guys that you guys have to address. Okay. Uh, your spouse's life should revolve around the marriage. Fact or fiction? Marriage comes first before everything. Yeah, I guess I was going to ask you to elaborate what exactly that means. So marriage is top priority before purpose, before career, before kids, before uh, friends and family, I marriage first. That. Yeah, I would say I would say yes, for sure. Okay, yeah. so we on, we honor marriage week, first. I, well, or this past week I said, I said, babe, if I ever lost you, every single part of my life is based on like her winning or her goals mm. everything everything i do is based on i just want Angela to be happy so if that source left like 
I would have to reestablish goals. What does that mean? Every part of my goal is based on her winning. So your life, your entire life is based on her winning. Mm -hmm. You wake up in the morning like, how can I help my wife win? Yeah, like how can I? Because of my position. So like I do the laundry, I do the cleaning, I oh, wash the car. Oh, you do the, the car, domestic work. I do everything. You guys are very non-traditional. If she, if she needs clothes, I shop for her. I style her. Anything that she needs, I'll do. Because, because I recognize this is my position right now. But at the same time, it's like, well, I, I want you to excel in every way, shape, or form. And she don't like doing any of these things. <laughs> so I'm like, I'll do them. Okay. I get up early. I'm at the gym by five in the morning. I finish all my work by like noon. And so I just, I just serve. How do we get more men with that mindset? How do, how do we flip the switch or guide them is what I like to call it to being more like this Manuel philosophy. Well, I think it's just defining again. Like if you're the guy that thinks in the, you know, the archetypal like way of, oh, I need to provide in this way. If I'm not making the money, dude, I remember I went to Bible college. So I remember asking, we had a New Testament class and it was probably like 150 people in there, mainly men. And I said, guys, if your wife made more money, these are future pastors. If your, guy, if your wife made more money than you, would you guys be okay? Bruh, the whole place erupted, mm. like negative. No, nah, we're the leaders of the house. We're the da 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 I'm like, damn. So you got to get with some women that just, just want to be wise. Because mm -hmm. if she got any kind of desire and she is better at it than yeah. you, then all of a sudden you're out of alignment because she's awesome at what she does. Yeah. That's just stupid. And I remember I sat in my seat like just thinking, wow, why would I ever want to stifle my wife? Like I need to figure out ways that I'm going to make her bigger. Mm, like That's so, so key. So I only think about what can I add? Before I used to insert where I'm not supposed to. I used to open my mouth too much. <laughs> now I'm like, okay, I have ideas. I'm going to say them and then I'm going to jump out. I'm Are gonna... people shocked when they meet him, Angela? Because I think that, um, and because I've been radio so long, uh, we have this notion that like when a comedian comes in or when a personality or um, actress comes in, that their personality is going to be larger than life and fill up the room. And oftentimes that's the character that you guys play or who you are on stage. So when they meet your partner, are they like, oh, he's a lot, but we expected you to be a lot. <laughs> is it like shocking to them? Because I feel like that's what they expect from me and my husband. He is actually bigger than me and talks more than me, but they expect it to be me. Uh huh. I don't know. I mean, I know that people expect that of me yeah. when I go into places. I've never really considered what they expect of him, but also he's kind of his own persona. If people know of me, they already know of him usually. So I've never really thought about what people expect my spouse to be like. See, I would think that he, that you would be, because you usually bigger personalities, they're balanced with someone extremely chill, but because you actually have more of a chill energy, he is the yeah. intense personality. Like, high energy i love it i love the dynamic but it creates balance once again he can talk to somebody for hours and hours yes. and hours like on social media get in a debate with somebody for hours and i have no energy or time <laughs> for any of that and yeah so we're he definitely is more um he has more energy more um like thrives off of like connecting mm -hmm. with people and I'll, I'll thrive off of like going in my quiet place and like tuning in, you know, and then I'm are like, you more introverted? Um, I, I'm like an introverted extrovert because of like my industry, what I do mm -hmm. for a living. Like it's, I'm very real by persona on stage. And when I'm in meet and greets with people, I just think I, I am very aware of my energy, my capacity mm. and what I am available for and when to conserve and when to hold on and when to give it all. And yeah. then when I'm like, I got to tap out because the best of me is not present anymore because she's all poured out yeah, yeah yeah so I think I just have a really good awareness of my capacity and then also he just has more capacity than I do he's up at 5 a.m go 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 loud he has no filter he just talks so <laughs> loud I'm just like oh my god how do you a lot of women say they want these extroverts right these like very friendly loving life of the party type of men and then when I describe it to them of hey so can you handle your man talking to that woman, talking to that guy, talking, you know, shaking hands, kissing babies. 
they have to think about it because it actually can be intimidating and make them feel insecure sometimes seeing their partner so social giving so much energy to everybody. Mm -hmm. How do you handle that and not get insecure that he is sharing himself with other people? Um, I think it would probably make me more insecure the other way if like he was quiet into mm. himself and be like, no, nope, people think you don't like them. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I'm also, uh, like I'm not, I come alive right now because we're talking stuff it. that is important to me. Yeah, for sure. And I study it a lot. When I'm in her world, bruh. Oh, sure. Oh, like guys, if we're, if sure. we're at my shows, you guys switch hats. Well, if we're at my shows and like he's out and about like in the audience or whatever, he's he's definitely not like, hey, who wants to come no. meet me? Like he's, ah. I'm pure support role. Like I don't and I don't insert myself. You know, I don't go anywhere that I don't need to be. Yeah. She'll ask me to go places and I'll be like, do I need to be there? Mm. Because if not, I'm not trying to be in the light. I don't want her management thinking that I'm trying to be that uh, husband manager. I know my place. Again, before when we first got married, I think I was more like, you know, you should do this, you should do this. But again, I had to humble myself and be like, bruh, you ain't doing what she's doing. So as much as you think you got great ideas, right now the way life is playing out, her ideas are winning. Mm. So how about like maybe learn what she's doing? Yeah. Or just give opinion and then trust that she has the knowledge and the heart and the know-how to assess what I'm saying. And she'll judge for herself what's best for her career and her dreams. You just support, no matter what, you just support. Even if you think you know the way to do it. Because I'll, I'll have ideas, like we were talking about earlier, I'm on a two-year schedule. Well, I'll be like, you should do this, mm -hmm. you should do this. And usually two years later, her manager will say it. Somebody <laughs> will say it, she will be like, babe, I'm gonna do this. And I'll be like. I told you you should do that. <laughs> but you know what? I could be cocky and be like, you see, I'm always right. But now I started thinking, well, maybe it just took two years for the universe to align with her. Maybe now is the right time. I love that right perspective. Time. I love maybe that perspective. Right My husband needs to watch this podcast because he will definitely be the one that, I told you so. You listen to everybody but me. And I'm like, oh, he says that <laughs> I feel that. I feel that. But all then I, I always have to draw myself back and be like, but if you trust her and this gut that got her where she's at, then there's something inside of her that tells her, well, then this is when I should act. Yeah. I should act now. Because most of the times when she's done it, it's it's been successful. So when I told her, hey, let's do music for this character one quickly she had, you know, never done it before, but she felt it was the right time. And then we killed it, crushed it. I got her signed to Warner Brothers. We did this tour. It was successful. And it was like, oh. I love it. This is awesome. One thing that I speak to is intimacy and relationship. And there's six different types of intimacy that couples share there's financial intimacy which you seem to be amazing at right you guys are like crushing that there is spiritual intimacy once again you guys are crushing there's emotional intimacy recreational intimacy which is like the time that you guys spend together intellectual intimacy which is can i respect my person's um direction and leadership and their knowledge their information that they have to share and then the last one is physical intimacy mm -hmm. With you guys having such crazy schedules, her being on tour, you being on tour, you, you know, doing your podcast, producing all these kind of things. How do you guys check in with those different six intimacies if you guys are sometimes separate? How are you? Are you guys still Skyping? Like, what does that look like to create and continue to build the intimacy in your relationship? Well, now it's FaceTime. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> we've evolved. Um, we, when we first got married, we went to a marriage counselor. I love it. And um, he gave us some tips that we still use today. And um, one of those was um, you ask your partner, um, what is something that you thought today that you wouldn't have told me if I didn't ask you? Mm. And it causes you to go in. We think thousands and thousands of thoughts a day, but you don't share all of those thoughts for with sure. somebody. Maybe it's like a negative thought, a self-sabotaging thought, a jealous thought, or uh, maybe it was a, a dream that you had. One day I can do this maybe or whatever it was. Um, if you ask your partner, it causes you to go into that place that you don't share with anyone else and be 
open to that person. So it's creating intimacy with that person. And, um, that is one way that we, we still, we haven't lately, um, said that to each other, but it's something that we still tap into. Let's do it right now. What's one thought you haven't shared with Angela today? Well, and that's, (laughs) and that is one thing too. Like this is an intimacy tool. Like I remember he was like asking it to one of our friends or something. And I was like, (laughs) Wrong, sir. This is a marriage intimacy <laughs> question. Thank you. She could ask that with somebody else. You're so funny. We we're in a, we're in a different place in life now that where I'm not touring. So now I'll go with her on tour. Oh, perfect. So as far as like our to in- like the good city. Yeah, he, I don't go to the good city. I'm I not mean, going to Cleveland. Um, but sorry, Cleveland. Sorry, Cleveland. Ooh, <laughs> Cleveland. But just we'll be together out. so much. So <laughs> as far as communication, as far as all the intimacies, like we're we're well at it now we're even better with communication before i used to talk too much with her Mm. now i recognize when she shuts off when she's done listening my capacity yeah before it used to be like long conversations where i'm just like why don't you listen when it's more like she has a smaller um bandwidth she's like give me the bullet points yeah smaller bandwidth and then don't repeat yourself mm. so it's like i now i just do drive-by conversation <laughs> boom get out oh you're not paying attention anymore all right i'm out um but are you finding that she's responsive to that like when he does do the bullet points and like gives it to you the way that you want to receive it then do you react the way that he wants or does he get to see the change or what he's looking for or even the understanding oh do you i mean it's been good i honestly i don't <laughs> Before we used to, I, man, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just super optimistic or I only see the good, but I just, yeah, I'm just really proud of our relationship. Like it's, it's so dope. I don't remember, I don't remember the last time we argued. Like we'll have like a. We argue, don't get it twisted. I just don't but, remember it. Like yeah. the frequency is not at a point, And I don't think it ever was at a point to where it would register in my mind. Damn, what did I do? Mm-hmm. Why am I with this person? We argue so much. Uh, there was an initial time where I recognized we were arguing a lot, but you want to be honest, if I were to be honest, the reason yeah. why was because I was expecting her to think like me. Mm. When she didn't do things- We make things, that mistake though oftentimes, don't yeah, we though? When she didn't do things the way I would do them, I would get annoyed. Or if she can't comprehend how I can comprehend, or if she doesn't think at the pace that I think, I get frustrated, I get annoyed, I get angry. And I'm like, bro, you're you have so much ego. You're mad at your wife mm. because she can't process as quick as you can. Mm. And somehow you think you're superior mm. because you can process faster. That's just ego. Yeah. Like 99% of the times when I was angry with her it was more me than her. So how did you gain understanding from her? If you wanted her to comprehend something and she wasn't getting it, mm-hmm. did you try 10 different ways to get it to her? Or like, what did you do so that she could see your perspective or get to your perspective? I I honestly would hit her with the facts and then walk away. Because one thing that's beautiful about my wife is that I I remember the reason I was able to marry her was because I remember I asked God, I was like, God, man, should I marry this chick? And I remember God saying, I trust her. And I said to God, yo, if you trust her, then I trust her. Mm-hmm. And what I've learned that, that that meant was at the end of the day, my wife will always do the right thing. Mm. I just got to leave it with her. Because again, character, like I fell in love with character. I need some time. (laughs) But she's a good person. So I know she's going to make the right decision. Even though she's spicy and she's like, before when we first got married, she would like bow up on me. Like she'd be real. (laughs) Say some stuff that I'm like, whoa. (laughs) Stuff that came out of her mouth. I'd be like, bruh, you know what you just said? Like, it would be crazy. And I don't, I don't do that. I don't argue like that. You felt like it was disrespectful? A hundred percent. It was. It, it How did you feeling. shift that? Because a lot of women, we sometimes don't have a filter. How did you shift the, your dialogue towards him? Um, a lot of self work, but also, my husband would lead by example, mm. and he would not give me Say what I gave again. him. Yes, and and he would highlight it and show me how he's not doing to me what I'm doing to him, and if he were to say the things that I was saying, oh, forget it. I would be pissed, but he never would say the things that I was saying. Mm. So it was like enough of that. And then also self-work, going to therapy. Yep, yep. And yeah, because we'd be that. in therapy and, and she would bring stuff up that happened like three, four years ago. <laughs> She'd be like, oh, he does this. And I was like, babe, when was the last time that happened? 
because I. But pride, three years ago, though, you I didn't pride there. myself mm-hmm. on when my wife says, "Yo, I don't like this about you." How quick does it change? Way quick. Immediate. Like, mind's a process. Because mm-hmm. in my mind, I'm like, "Oh, if I'm trying to be better for this person, and she tells me this is how you can be better for me, yeah, then I'm gonna take that serious." So if you think I'm being, this is making me um, not an attractive man to you, I'm going to change it. And I'm going to change it quick. And then our problem was he would do the same to me. And I'd be like, well, you should work on that. Why does that bother you so much? <laughs> That's a problem. Yeah. <laughs> she says she says process. And I always translate. I told her, I was like, babe, anytime you says, I need to process that. Right. I'm like, you mean procrastinate. Right. I, I, I'm not ready to address that yet. You mean procrastinate. It ain't processing. I think um, what you hit that Manuel does takes a lot of self-regulation that I don't know if a lot of people have that capacity to not throw no. stones with stones, right? To a not fight do not. Do fire not. with fire. So the fact that you have a partner who's capable of being patient with you, even when you're impatient, I think is that that's gold right there. I'm going to tell you right now, ladies, you'll probably find that in that teacher who's eh. making $50,000 a year. Eh. He's probably real patient <laughs> out there working with third work. graders every day. Look, okay? It's doing the ego work. If you, if you feel the need to always be right, it's because something in you thinks that you are, there's no, there's no like uh, fault in you. Yeah. Most of us can point out faults in a lot of people. Yep. It's easy. But rarely can you look at yourself and be like, oh, this is where I'm falling mm-hmm. short. And that's just, to me, I feel like that's my superpower. Like, I'm going to look at myself and I'm going to be like, man, bruh, you inconsistent. You're not integral in this area. You're not, you're like, you're not following through in this area. So you can't come at her in that certain way. And if you try to fight her that you're yeah. right, what you're saying is there's never going to be a time where you're wrong. And I've seen in my own life how many times I'm wrong. Mm. And I'm like, shoot, I don't want that pressure no more. I'd rather just be like, you know what? I could be right. I could be wrong. Let's check in a year. How does she handle, and I'm assuming, does she, does she run her stand by, by you before she performs it? No, like, no, no. She never tells you her jokes? I to watch it. Because I was going to say, how does she handle if you were like, babe, that didn't hit? Like, is she receptive I've, to that? I've done that a couple times, but again, she's where <laughs> she's at. She's I'm like, where, I'm going to run that I'm joke where anyway. I'm at. So I'm like, I'm not a comedian. I used to watch her all the time and I, and I would say stuff. Yeah. Now I do I do not watch anything until she's done. Mm. I won't watch a show. When I go to her shows, I fall asleep in the back. It's so annoying. And when she's <laughs> done, when she's like, babe, I'm done with my hour, then I watch it so I can give her an honest critique. An mm. honest so feedback. you do like run it back and then tell her like some constructive criticism. Around only, it. No, only when she's done. This is what I feel. This is what hit. This is what didn't. Because again, I trust her. Feelings. Do you ever make any edits or changes after he tells you a joke? No, like to no. change? I go, oh, I'm sorry. You feel that way. <laughs> you just don't understand. Did you hear the audience laugh? <laughs> Get on board. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I'm not like a pro at it. I'm not. I'm not like. I just think certain things, but I. I have to. I always lean back on her judgment because I'm like. I love it. You're you're 13, 14, 15 years. She's like in. at this point. <laughs> It's like, yeah. I know what I'm doing. Bro. Like, you good. <laughs> I acknowledge you good. You don't need to listen to me at all. Okay. I know I don't have you guys for that much time, but we have to talk about the book. I was kind of asking you questions earlier because I, I, I love that it came out. I can't wait to read this. I'm so blessed. Thank you for giving it to me. But you have to share with us just a little bit about what we can expect from this. So who do I think I am? Why this title? And why a book? Why did we need to get this book from you, Angela? Who do I think I am? Stories of chola wishes and caviar dreams. Uh, Who do I think I am? Stories of self-identity. Growing up Mexican and American, but I didn't speak Spanish. My last name was Johnson. I wanted to be a chola real bad, (laughs) but nobody was scared of little payasa Johnson. Um, So it's a lot of stories of my upbringing Mm -hmm. and who am I? And then it's also, who do I think I am to dream such big dreams and go for them? Wow. So it's also stories of me chasing my dreams, how I got to where I am today, the ups and downs, some very honest stories in there. I love that. Um, story, my chapter six is called I'm Dating You Because I'm Hungry. And uh, that was a lot of my dating stories where I, a girl, I was hungry. You want to take me on let, Thursday? Yes, I'll meet you at Chili's. Let's go. And my roommate something to eat, some let, hey, <laughs> let me say, let me tell you, let me, can I get something to go, please? Thank you. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and then uh, talks about my faith, my, you know, evolving faith from where I was as a child to where I am now and how that's constantly evolving. And um, yeah, it's a, a lot of me, who I am, how I got to where I am today. And Do um, we share uh, anything about marriage in here? 
oh yeah, I talked about how I met my husband, our relationship, uh, how we work together. Um, so yeah, I definitely talk about that in there too. I love that. Okay. This is incredible. Who do I think I am? Um, I think this is, I think that it's important when we do fan out on someone, right? Fan being me. Um, that we get to get the backstory of who you really are, right? Like I know what image I could have in my head of why I adore you or why I think that you're interesting. But when we get opportunities to read books about you, it gives us more insight, I feel like, into who created you, like your your coming of age, your becoming story. Yeah. And so I think it's beautiful that you wrote this. And I'm so excited. I know my sister's going to read it with me. Um, yeah, thank <laughs> you. That story is so dope. I always tell them, like, babe, every time you tell your story, I fall in love all over again. Dang, I love hearing you talk about her. It's so I can dope listen because to, I can listen to you talk about her. No, she's like, <laughs> she's me so, too. Look, but she's I can listen dope. to you talk about she your came, wife nonstop. I love she it. She came from the Bay on a dream, slept, sleeping on couches. Like, I look as a dreamer, I just have so much respect for somebody who says they're going to do something. And I've broken up with girls for not doing what they said. I remember I dated this one chick and she was like, yeah, I'm going to go to Tampa and start a dance school. I'm like, that's dope. Right. Six months later, no What's plans. Got through? a normal job is not even. And I broke up and I was like, if you don't chase your dream, mm -hmm. there's going to be a time where I'm going to want to give up on mine and you're going to let me. You're going to you, let me. So that's I love this accountability piece. Do you think that women should do the same with men when a man says he is not that he wants to do something and he doesn't do it? Should they let him go because he isn't keeping his word to himself? If it's real. If you happen to have that chronic guy who's always doing the next thing mm -hmm. and they just don't know themselves, that's a little different. Yes. But I do think if a if a man or a woman, if they don't do what they say they're going to do, A, to me, procrastination is unattractive. Yeah. To me, settling for a secondary life is unattractive. Yep. I know that if you have a dream and a goal in your life and you want to do it, how you get there is as important as you getting there. Mm. So me hearing her story of saying, I want to do this and how she always showed up auditioning for the Raider cheerleaders, cheerleaders when she doesn't have any kind of professional dance training. <laughs> do you know how much courage it takes to step in there and dance with professional dancers just as a little girl from yeah. like nowhere yeah. and then move to L.A.? And then show up to auditions. We, I read all our auditions, most of them, with her. And I'm just amazed that she shows up. Wow. Because after hearing no three times, I quit yep. doing the model thing. I had three no's. And I was like, bro, this ain't for me. <laughs> I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> this ain't for me. <laughs> they missed out on a good, on a good thing. And <laughs> she keeps going. And I'm just like, man. And so to see her win, to see the life that we live, I'm just like, bruh, where you come from, where you're at, I just think it's beautiful. Last Thank question. You. I have a last question. How did you know that he was your purpose mate? And how did you know that she was your purpose mate? You guys are purpose partners. That is your purpose boppy. How did you know? My purpose boppy. Um, hmm. I, I don't know if this. Okay, so there was this moment. Maybe it's a purpose moment. But um, I was having a difficult conversation with my sister at the time. And I remember he helped me. Um, draw a healthy boundary hmm. and communicate that, communicate my feelings and my words in a healthy way to my sister. And then we were just dating at the time. And I remember that was a, a moment for me where I was like, whoa, like I, I learned from him. He was actually right mm -hmm. in what he was saying. He communicated it with love and with wisdom. And I was like, oh, Okay, like he he helped um, correct something that was not operating yeah. in alignment within me. And I was able to communicate that with my sister. I remember in that moment, I was like, hmm, this guy right I here. I can learn from you. See, like that's yeah. that intellectual intimacy right there. <laughs> Mine was our first argument. Uh, she wanted to spend a certain amount on the wedding and I was not having it. I was like mind you again we had the financial talk and i was like i'll always be okay as long as you don't ever lord the money thing over me yeah if you want to do that we don't need to get married mm. and so our first argument was how much we were going to spend on the wedding mm. and i was like i didn't make that all last year there's no way mm -hmm. and she said she goes well i saved up and that's what i want to spend it on i was like later and we didn't <gasps> talk for three days 
during our, our engagement. Because she weaponized the money. She weaponized the money. And to me, it showed me, oh, you think because you make more money, you get a more say. Mm. And I'm just like, I can't rock with somebody like that ever. It's just, it just shows me lack of respect. And it shows me that you put more value on money mm. than on what's really important. And after the three days, she came back with a revised budget in half. Yes, girl. She came and back with PowerPoint so, presentation. Yeah, it just <laughs> well, it just confirmed what I felt God was telling me, which is like, yo, trust her. Yeah. She'll probably like, she'll stay pissed. She'll go off for a second, but she's always going to come she'll back reassess. with the right heart. Yeah. And as the marriage has gone on, that distance and that decision process is happening way more like just quick now. Before, she'll be mad at me and we'll drive home for eight hours and she won't say a word. <laughs> Damn. Longest Gr- Angela. road trip ever. Angela, Just, you got some willpower, girl. Really? I'm like, break. Oh, <laughs> oh, I know how to hold a grip. <laughs> it was and I, I was, let me show you my strength. Damn. So I was like, watch this. <laughs> Damn. And now it's not like that. Like, we, it's, it, I just don't, we just don't have those moments anymore. Now we, we have a problem when we get to it quick and it's over quick. Or I can communicate. I need a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I love that because I think that we don't do that enough with our partners is give them a beat, give them a moment to really process, right? You're leveraging process a lot, but like Mm -hmm. (laughs) sometimes we really do need that space. And oftentimes what will happen is we will get into a disagreement and it's so important to us to change our partner's mind in that moment versus give it a beat, let them assess where they're coming from, what you said, let them maybe reevaluate the situation and calm down from the energy that you left them at. And then they can circle back and say, you know what, that was a fair point. Or, you know, I'll reconsider this. I think we don't do that enough. We don't just give our partner time to think about what we even asked for because we want it turns into an argument. And the key thing you said is circle back. Yep. She would have a problem with not circling back. <laughs> she would just be gone. Well, because, you know, <laughs> at the end of the day, if you think you're right, you're not going to process something. Yeah, yeah. So if, you, if you're that type of person that you're like, no, I'm right, he's wrong. You're just saying, give me a beat so that he can stop talking. So they can leave you can alone. Stop yeah. To me, my biggest thing working with her was her actually considering it and coming back and discussing it. So like the first five years, there was like major things that bothered me that I can never get her to come back and have the conversation. It took like five years. What to I'm resolve. hearing is that you coached your wife. Yeah. <laughs> but this is important because I think we think that people come prepackaged, right. ready to go. You're going to be an amazing wife and you're going to be an amazing right. husband. No, boo. We coached each other. Like we've been molding and growing mm-hmm. each other through this process. Yeah. And I think that's like a reflection of God's love, right? Like this ability to be able to love someone and still be understanding with them and patient while they evolve into the best version of themselves. Yeah, give so them the space to I do that. I love this, you guys. You guys are going to share with us where everybody can find you. Where can we find your work, your real estate, your music? Angela, where can we get your book? Um, find your, you know, next tour. Tell us everywhere we can reach you. Uh, my website is Angela.com, A-N-J-E-L-A-H.com. And I'm on Instagram. Uh, I'm on all the social media sites. Um, but... I'm probably most communicative on Instagram at Angela Johnson. You can get my book on Audible if you want to hear me read it to you myself. You can get it on uh, anywhere you get books. Barnes and Noble, Amazon, wherever you get books. I'm going to download the Audible. Thank you. <laughs> In addition, yeah, I'm, I do it while I drive. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm, a, I'm a mainly active on, on Instagram and Facebook as well. And once you find me on Instagram, it's spelled Manuel, like this man is doing well. So M A N W E. I love it. <laughs> Just find me there. We'll chat it up. I answer all my messages. So. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Um, and you guys can always play with my Twitter, stroke my Instagram at Spicy Mati. Go to the spicylife.com. Share this episode with a friend. Click and subscribe. You know what to do. And there you guys have it. You have just been spiced. <laughs>